salute past the whitehead he misunderstood and healing people so yeah Let's start out with a couple of quick receipts in the fact that Foxy Brown does have a past, a well-documented past of scamming, which is no different than Bishop Lamar Whitehead. Both of them have a past history of scamming. So I don't know, be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about their similar track records. And also, especially after you hear what I'm about to tell you in this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Let's get into it. Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. What's the relation between, and I'll tell you what's going on behind the relation between them, but the initial relation is that according to, according to, okay, the New York Post, Bishop Lamar Whitehead and Foxy Brown are cousins. Like, what? And I'm going to pull up the article, and I think a lot of us missed this initially because there was so many other, um, I think, like, in what year was this 2016 hmm. there was so much other inflammatory detail surrounding bishop lamar whitehead when he first was thrusted into the public opinion at least for the most of us which started with the church robbery now i do see that this article is from 2016 so it seems like there's a group of people in new york well i mean he's brooklyn based that have had their eye on him for a while and i think what makes him more his arrogantness and the fact that he wants to be so flashy is him always connecting himself to Mayor Eric Adams um, in the media, right, in public. I think he feels like it gives him clout or brownie points or something of that nature. That's what it seems like to me. But so we see that, that this is this article from 2016. Do y'all see this? October 17th. To, so this is how long he's been on the media's radar at the very least so let me skip to searching for a word I'm gonna search okay so i searched for the word foxy I can, let me just search for brown instead um take me down there child okay so we get here right to this part of the article pay attention all right because you know bishop lamar whitehead all this stuff that he's involved in between stealing churches and 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 everything else and the indictment and swindling people out of 90,000 plus dollars. It's, it's a lot, okay? Now, let's just focus on these couple of sentences here. Now, Bishop Lamar Whitehead was ordained a bishop in January of 2016, and he maintains that both lawsuits were quote unquote handled in court and have been dealt with. Since late 2013, Whitehead has been bioed by public support from Mayor Eric Adams, who introduced him at a concert. And he introduced him as my good friend and good brother. Now, Mayor Eric Adams also gave an honorary citation to Whitehead's mother last year at Borough Hall and gave a key to Brooklyn Whitehead's cousin, the rapper Foxy Brown in February. Like, I had to read that a couple of times to make sure I wasn't, you know, misinterpreting this sentence here. He gave an honorary citation. Okay, Mayor Eric Adams gave Bishop Lamar Whitehead's mother some sort of citation. What is it about? Don't know. Don't really care at the moment. That's not the highlight of the story. But gave a key to Brooklyn to Lamar's cousin, who is the rapper Foxy Brown. In February, and this article was written in 2016, so that's how long that outlet knew about it. Interesting. Here's where it gets a little deeper, though. And again, this is according to the New York Post. The article's right here, right? You saw the article, the the the, the title of the article when I was when I had scrolled up. So. How was he able to swindle quite a few people out of their funds or their churches? And y'all know I've done several videos on this. Here's one thumbnail from one video I did. I even brought on a legal expert and, and an actual practicing attorney, Pam Esquire, onto my channel 
and I had my summary that I ran down and she provided all of the different, the clarity in between all of the main bullet points that I had, which was probably like 25 of them. She helped fill in the blanks between the synopsis of what, cause it's, 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 it's there's so much legal paperwork, incriminating paperwork and, and, and criminal stuff that he's done to go over. It's impossible to even get through it in one day. Okay. But he's been stealing churches. Okay. He literally stole a church from um he stole this church named gloria god from you know these people who had been there for 14 years they had literally revamped it changed it from an auto garage and turned it into um a church renovated it like i've seen the before and after pictures and they really did an amazing job because it looked like that structure was a church from the beginning uh, but nonetheless they were having some issues with refinancing the building so they added bishop lamar white had became a friend of the church right like i mean he's predatory as hell Right. So it was very intentional for him. This is all after he's already been indictment uh, after he's already been indicted and different things of this nature with this fraudulent move to steal this church from these people. And they needed to refinance. So he was like, hey, I can I can help you refinance. Just add me onto the deed and we can use my credit. Blah, 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 blah. Not the smartest move. Right. On behalf of the church. Um, but, you know. It happened. And within that process, he ended up evicting them from their own church. And there was just this constant battle. He changed the locks and and um, was using frivolous court uh, processes and motions in order to get these people evicted from their own church that they have been in and turned around over the course of 14 years. And in order to get his way within the court process, he filed bankruptcy. He did all these things. And finally, at some point, the courts was like, okay, enough of this. This is their church. So you need to get out. They're cutting the locks. Off. And, and when they, the judge ordered that, he goes down there and he's trying. Because honestly, Bishop Lamar Whitehead has a lot of the NYPD in his pocket. He really does. And I mean, I've literally seen it on live stream. The judge just ordered for you to hand the keys over to these people in their church. You have to give them their church back now according you know and he all he does is call his favorite new york police officers and have them come down there to say no y'all can't have y'all church back let bishop lamore whitehead stay here it's 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 sickening and insane to see now mind you bishop lamar whitehead has already did a good stint in jail a good one not just the the week or so he spent in december right so um he's got a lot of people in his pocket and when he finally actually it was the end of the road and he realized he couldn't like hold off no more. He had to get out and give them people their church back. He destroyed the church on his way out. I mean, destroyed the church so that costing the church money so that they would have to pay more in order to hold, you know, their services. Okay. And so Foxy Brown comes into play here. It, it's, it's so much, it's, it's such a large story and I've done videos. You can go back and check my older videos because we, we've spoken in depth about him. So how does Foxy Brown come into play? So Foxy Brown comes into the picture because she was helping him out with his credit card fraud and identity theft. We know he's a swindler. We know he's a predator. The woman, the elderly woman that he stole $90,000 from was a person who was of his congregation that was the size of a shoebox. that congregation i don't know if it got foreclosed whatever the case was but it was small and all he had was a little tablecloth or shower curtain up back there that church that we we caught the the live footage from his facebook live stream where he got quote unquote robbed for between four hundred thousand and a million dollars right they were a congregant of that uh church and he swindled that woman out of that ninety thousand dollars and that was her life savings and and just like with the glory of god church that he stole they trusted him to help them with something financially whether it was credit or, or whatever the case was they needed to refinance they trusted him he scammed them this woman here was trying to get a house but her credit wasn't where she needed it to be so he said i'll help you out just give me this ninety thousand dollars i'll give you a hundred dollars a week of your own money that's the part that really and we read through those documents too. Give me $90,000 and I'll give you a hundred dollars allowance of your own money to survive a week. I don't know anybody, any grown person that can live off a hundred dollars a week, but, and, and stole her money and she ended up suing him. Right? So Foxy Brown 
being his cousin, according to the New York Post, is helping him with the credit card fraud and identity theft. You know, you got to do a little bit of, you know, identity scamming in order to do successful credit card fraud because you're using other people's names and things of that nature. So Foxy Brown, right? And this is the information that I got from um, Tasha K. Shout out to TKLive.com. I do recommend that y'all go sign up for her website um, at TashaKLive.com. And Foxy was the one letting him know who are the licks and when they're hot and when they're ready to be swindled, right? Because scamming, scamming is a really, um, it's a really calculated process. You, 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 you got to know when these people are here, when they're most vulnerable, when they have a certain amount of money and when's the best time, when are they not looking the most and all that other stuff. Foxy Brown was allegedly the one helping, helping him with this. Baby, I mean, just make it make sense. This woman has hearing loss issues to the point where she can't even do performances anymore because she, she has a hard time staying on beat because she has a hearing impairment. She's living with a hearing impairment and she has to have somebody tapping her to help her keep track of the four count beat. She can barely hear and she out here helping her cousin of a scam and past the scam. Now, all of this is alleged in according to reports, okay? But this is out of line. This is out of line, and he's just way too sick and way too bold. They're going to put him away. And to think that he did that he did what he did with the church while he was already under a federal investigation. He was already under federal investigation. So they've been listening to his phone call. So now I need to tell y'all about how him and Tasha K blew up. But let's go to the... Let's go to the bush first. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. So Tasha Kay says that she stopped dealing with Lamar White here because I do remember that they were cool, right? I was seeing them on Instagram lives. I was seeing them, you know, laughing and joking on the Instagram lives, especially kind of like at the height or the takeoff of the Larry Reed, Bishop Lamar Whitehead war. And then what came out of that was Larry Reed's alleged past and, 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 and prior court case where it seemed like he might have been a pedo. Right. Those allegations against Levantre when he was a minor and a, 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 allegedly, you know, what Lamar was pushing off was that Larry Reed had had some inappropriate sexual contact with Lamar, who was 15, 16 at the time. I won't get into what they were because they were, it's egregious to even hear, even if it's not true. But the allegations were horrendous. I'm not here to say if Larry Reed was guilty or not because I wasn't there and it's way too muddled for me. However, she says she stopped dealing with him because, first of all, they had a big blowout on the phone. They had a big blowout on the phone because he felt like he made the connection between Tasha Kay and the information about Levantre, about Larry Reed being a possible predator, you know, or pedo, because there was a court case, although, you know, nothing ever came of that. Like he wasn't found guilty of that, but it did go to court and there's a lot of paperwork and documentation behind it. So he was the connection to help Tasha, you know, Tasha put out several stories on Larry Reed and the allegations against Levantre. So he was the connect and he felt like after he connected Levantre with Tasha, he felt like he had her blog and, and, and her influence and her voice in his pocket. And she didn't like that because she's like, look, this is witness intimidation. It was like everybody that Lamar Whitehead had an issue with, he's calling Tasha. I need you to put this out. I need you to put this out. And he didn't always have receipts. The only reason she said she accepted Levantre's story was because Levantre actually had receipts. Lamar didn't. Lamar put the bug in her ear, made the connect between the two, but he didn't have the receipts. So after Tasha put out that story about Levantre, because she had, you know, receipts being the court records and his account, and she did a sit down interview with Levantre and his mom, he felt like he could just call her up and, hey, I don't like this guy. This guy set me up, put this out. And she started to feel like, Nah, what do you even have any receipts about this? And he didn't have receipts and he was kind of getting ticked off. And the fact that he's clearly being investigated by the feds, they're clearly listening to his phone calls. She don't want to be caught up in that. Nobody does, especially because if you're having me put out information that may 
not be true because you don't have receipts. These are just your inklings and accusations and possible revenge kink. That could be classified in a court of law with you being investigated by the feds. That could be classified as witness intimidation. I have no proof that these people that you keep telling me are monsters are monsters. I have nothing. You know, and it's very clear that Bishop Lamar Whitehead does have this, this, uh, he doesn't like to lose. And if he feels like you're putting information out on him, even if it's true and it doesn't make him look great, or if you're not, if you're not giving commentary that praises him, he is going to be stuck on you for weeks. He has this revenge thing and he'll even make it up sometimes. So Tosh was like, nah, I ain't with that. You trying to get me caught up in this federal case. They listening to these phone calls every time you call me on the phone. And she said they had a big blow up on the phone and she told him not to call him, uh, not to call her no more because he, you know, he was trying to like base on her, like, because she didn't want to put out stories without receipts and asked her, like, are you threatening me? And she's like, I'm not threatening you. I'm just not putting out your stories without receipts. Stop calling me. So that's what Tasha said. And also <laughs> stealing churches yes because he is stealing churches <laughs> he's stealing churches so like i said he was supposed to be on the deed to help the glory of god religious institution refinance but he had them evicted instead which was fraudulent while he was under indictment because that wasn't the agreement and and that and if that wasn't proven to be true then they would have never gotten their church back they got their church back because they were able to prove the intent of why he was on the deed in the manner in which he was and not as a co-signer but as somebody who could actually make decisions which again wasn't the smartest move on the church's behalf but he went in there and gained their trust and did whatever this was a scheme set up from todd from the beginning okay <laughs> so that's that's what's going on with bishop lamar whitehead salute pastor whitehead he misunderstood and healing people So, yeah, um, I'm not sure how Foxy Brown lost her hearing. I'm not sure. Um, but that's, uh, cause I know, I know you lying. Like, don't, hey, think what you want to think. You ain't got to agree with me to kick it on the bus. I <laughs> But I'm gonna give you the side eye every time you say something crazy, child. <laughs> like, what's going on? But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.